put on this computer. And then, uh, and then we're gonna go live. Okay. Uh, and then we wanna start. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. You are so good, Father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. You're a good, good father. Thank you. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. you, Jesus. Mm. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you that you have given us the privilege to read the word. And I pray that you will speak through this through the word and uh, let your word bring a transformation power in us. We thank you. And uh, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. We are going to continue reading of the word from the book of Luke, chapter 14. Um, and it happened as he went into the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees to eat on the Sabbath, <clears throat> that they watched him closely and behold there was a certain man before him who had dropsy and jesus answering spoke to the lawyers and the pharisees saying is it lawful to heal on the sabbath but they kept silent and he took him and healed him and let him go and he answered and them saying which of you having a donkey or an ox that has fallen into your pit will not by any means immediately pull him out on the Sabbath. And they could not answer him regarding these things. So they, he told a parable to those people who were invited. And he noted how they chose the best places, saying to them, when you are invited by anyone to your wedding feast, do not sit down in the best place, lest one more honorable than you are invited by him. And he who invited you and him come, say to you, give place to this man. And then you begin with same, just take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go sit down in the lowest place so that when he who invited you comes and he may say to your friend, go up higher. Then you will have a glory in the presence of those who sit at the table with you. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled and he whoever humble himself will be exalted. Then he who said to him, who invited him, when you give a dinner or a supper, do not ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Now, when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his supper servant a supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all these things are now ready. Now, uh, but when all with one accord began to make excuses, the first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I'll ask you to have me excuse. Another said, I have bought a five oak of oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excuse. Till another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So that the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go into the highways and edges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of these men who are shall invited shall taste my supper. And now great multitudes with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not he bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? 
blessed after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish. All who see it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. A reward king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet who comes with 20,000 or else while the other is still on a great way off, he sends a delegation ask conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has ears to him, let him hear. Amen. Somebody read chapter 15, please. Thank you. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law mute, muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and lo uh, loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has a 10 silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God for one sinner who repents. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set off for a disciple for a distant country, distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a, city, a citizen of a country mm. who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pots that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his sense, he said, how many, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And yeah. here I'm starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like, your, like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. Mm. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his fingers and sandal, sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard a music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Mm. Your brother has come, he replied. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. Mm. But when this son of yours who's, who, who has squandered your property with prostitutes come home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, fa the father said, mm. you're always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Somebody read chapter 16, please. Thank you. The parable of the unjust steward. 
Hmm. He also said to his disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a steward and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he got every one of his master's debtors to him and said to them first, how much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. Then he said to another, and how much do you owe? So he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write 80. So the master commended the unjust steward because he has dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He who is faithful in what is least faithful is also faithful in that which is much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Mm. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Hmm. The law, prophets, and the kingdom. Now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they derided him. Hmm. And he said to them, You are those who justify themselves before men, but God knows your heart. For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of, the, of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one title of the law to fail. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced from her husband commits adultery. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The, the rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, and he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear that. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to them, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Somebody read chapter 17, please. Thank you. <clears throat> chapter 17. Shall I continue or not? Yes, I don't know if they are, are there. I see some people. <laughs> yeah, you can continue. <laughs> Uh, okay, continue, bro. Yeah, no. Yes. Then he said to the disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea, then he should offend one of these little ones. Mm -hmm. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And mm. if he sins against you seven times in a day, and mm. seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. 
faith and duty. And the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. And which of you, having a servant plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat? But will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunk and afterwards you will eat and drink? Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. <clears throat> Ten lepers cleansed. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Mm. Then as he entered a certain village, they met him ten men who were lepers who stood far off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Mm. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. Mm. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were they not ten cleansed? But where are the other nine? Were not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. The coming of the kingdom. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to the disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look here or look there, do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Mm. And as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Are you there, Prithiv? We can't hear you. <clears throat> okay, something gone wrong with him. Uh, I'll read from verse 20. Now he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they see the, say they see here and see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. And he said to the disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, <clears throat> look there or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also is the Son of Man will be in his day. So first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by his generation as... It was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them. Likewise, it was also in the days of Lot. They ate and they drank and they brought and they sold and they planted, they built. But on that day, the Lot went out of Sodom. It rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them. <clears throat> Uh, so it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he who is in the house stop and his goods are in the house. Let him not calm down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife, whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in the night, there will be two men in one bed. And one will be taken, another will be left. Two women will be grinding together. One will be taken, another left. Two women will be in the field. The one will be taken, another left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? He said to him, Where the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. 
Amen. Uh, somebody can read chapter 18, please. If you can be quick, that would be great. Mm. Chapter 18, then he spoke. The of the... Go oh. ahead, Jenny. <clears throat> Go ahead, Jenny. Yeah, the parable of the precious and good widow. Mm. Verse <clears throat> 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Mm. Yet in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in the town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. Mm. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I, I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps me bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she would eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says, and will let and will let God bring about justice for his chosen one who cry out to him day and night. Mm. If he keep putting them off, I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will you find faith on the earth? The parables of the Pharisees and the Pharisees. These some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple and to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Mm. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, mm. evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and say, God have mercy on me as sinner. I tell you this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, mm. and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Mm. The little children and Jesus. Verse 15. People were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. The rich and the kingdom of God. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Mm. Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, No one is good except God alone. You know the commandment. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All these things I have kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Wow. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Hmm. Those who heard this asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus replied, What is impossible with man is possible with God. Amen. Peter said to him, We have left all we have to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus said to them, mm. no one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for mm. the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. Mm. Verse 31, Jesus took the twelve and told them, we are going up to Jerusalem and everything that is written by the prophet about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He will be delivered over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, and spit on him. They will flock him and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. Amen. The disciples did not understand any of this, mm. meaning what hidden from them, and they did not know about what he was talking about. Mm. Verse 25. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside vacuum. Mm. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. He told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 
<clears throat> Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near Jesus, when he came near, Jesus asked him, mm. What do you want me to do for you? Ah. Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus. Praising <clears throat> God. When all the men saw it, they also praised God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Somebody read chapter 19, please. Thank you. Luke chapter 19. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all complained, saying, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Lord, look, Lord, I have given, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Now, as, he heard, as they heard these things, he spoke another parable because he was near Jerusalem and because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Therefore, he said, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he called 10 of his servants delivered to them ten minas and said to them, do business till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he, said, he then commanded the servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Master, your mina has earned ten minas. And he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to him, You also will you, you also be over five cities. Then another came saying, Master, here is your mina, which I have kept put away in a handkerchief. For I feared you because you are an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, out of your own mouth, I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank that at my coming, I might have collected it with interest? Mm. And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to him who has 10 minas. But they said to him, master, he has 10 minas. For I say to you that to everyone who has will be given and from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. But bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. When he had said thus, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And, he came to, and it came to pass, when he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite you, where as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Lose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you losing it? 
Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has made of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. Amen. But as they were losing the colt, the owners of it said to them, Why are you losing the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of him. Amen. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the colt, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then, as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. When some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to him, I tell you that if they should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Now, as he drew near, he mm. saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Mm. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you, and your children within you to the ground and they will not leave in you one stone upon another because oh. you did not know the time of your visitation. Mm. Then he went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it, saying to them, it is written, my house is a house of prayer, and, but you have made it a den of thieves. Mm. And he was teaching daily in the temple. But okay. the chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people sought to destroy him hmm. and were unable to do anything, for all the people were very attentive to hear him. Amen. Amen. We'll read chapter 20 and then wrap it off. Somebody read chapter 20, please. Thank you. I'll read, Amma. Yeah. One day, as he was teaching at the uh, teaching the people in the temple courts and preaching the gospel, the chief priests and the teachers of the law together with the elders, came up to him. Tell us, by what authority you are doing these things? They said, who gave you this authority? He replied, I will also ask you a question. Tell me, John's baptism, was it from heaven or from men? They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say from heaven, he will ask, why then didn't you believe him? But if we say from men, all the people will stone us because they are persuaded that John was a prophet. So they answered, we don't know where it was from. Jesus said, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. He went on to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard, rented it to some farmers, and went away for a long time. At harvest time, he sent a servant to the tenants, so they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. He sent another servant, but that one also they beat and treated shamefully and sent away empty-handed. He sent still a third, and they wounded him and threw him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my son, whom I love. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they talked the matters over. This is the heir. They said, let's kill him and the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Mm. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When the people heard this, they said, may this never be. Mm. Jesus looked directly at them and asked, then what is the meaning of that which is written? The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. Mm. everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces but he on whom it falls will be crushed mm. the teachers of the law and the chief priest looked for a way to arrest him immediately mm. because they knew he had spoken this parable against them but they were afraid of the people mm. keeping a close watch on him they sent spies who pretended to be honest they mm. hoped to catch Jesus in something he said 
so that they might hand him over to the power and authority of the governor so the spies question him teacher we mm. know that you speak and teach what is right mm. and that you do not show partiality but teach the way of god in accordance with the truth is it right for us to pay taxes to caesar or not he saw through their duplicity and said to them mm. show me a denarius mm. whose portrait and inscription are on it mm. caesar's they replied he said to them then give to caesar what is caesar's mm. and give to god what is god's they were unable to trap him in what he had said there in public and astonished by his answer they became silent Mm. Some of the Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus with a question. Teacher, mm. they said, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, the man must marry the widow and have children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married a woman and died childless. The second and the third married her and in the same way the seven died. leaving no children finally the woman died too now then at the resurrection whose wife will she be since the seven were married to her jesus replied the people of this age marry and are given in marriage but those who are considered worthy of taking part in that age and in the resurrection from the dead will neither marry nor be given in marriage and they can no longer die for they are like the angels they are god's children mm. since they are children of the resurrection but in the account of the bush even moses showed that the dead rise and he calls the lord the god of abraham and the god of isaac and the god of jacob mm. he is not the god of the dead but of the living mm. for to him all are alive amen some of the teachers of the law responded well said teacher and no one dared to ask him any more questions then jesus said to them how is it that they say the christ is the son of david mm. david himself declares in the book of psalms the lord said to my lord sit at my right hand until i make your enemies a footstool at your feet david calls him lord how then can he be his son while all the people were listening jesus said to his disciples because of the teachers of the law beware of the teachers of the law they like to walk around in flowing robes and love to be greeted in the marketplace and have the most important seats in the synagogue and the places of honor at the banquet mm. they devour widows houses and for a show make lengthy prayers mm. such men will be punished most severely Amen. I'm. I apologize. We do still have four minutes. Anybody would like to read twenty one, and then we'll wrap it up. It takes four minutes. <clears throat> The last chapter of today's reading. Anna, I'll read. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, please. The widow's two mites, and he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. and he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites so he said truly i say to you that this poor widow has put in <clears throat> more than all and for all these out of their abundance have put in offerings for god but she out of her poverty put in all the livelihood that she had then as some spoke of the temple how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations he said these things which you see the days will come in which not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down mm. so they asked him saying teacher but when will we see these things when will these things be and what sign will there be when these things are about to take place and he said take heed that you would not be deceived for many will come in my name saying i am he and the time has drawn near therefore do not go after them but mm. when you hear of wars and commotions do not be terrified for these things must come to pass first but the end will not come immediately then he said to them nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven mm. but before all these things they will lay their hands on you and persecute you 
delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons you will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake but it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony mm. therefore settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer for mm. i will give you a mouth and a wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist mm. you will be you will be betrayed even by your parents and brothers relatives and friends and they will put some of you to death and you will be hated by all for my name's sake mm. but not a hair of your head shall be lost by your patience possess your soul mm. but when you see jerusalem surrounded by armies mm. then know that its desolation is near then let those who are in judea flee to the mountains let those who are in midst of her depart and let not those who are in the country enter her for these are the days of vengeance and all these things which are written may be fulfilled but what to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days for there will be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people and they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations and the jerusalem will be trampled by gentiles until the times of gentiles are fulfilled and there will be signs in the sun in the moon and in the stars and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity the seas and the sea and the waves roaring men's heart failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory Mm. now when these things begin to happen look up and lift your heads because your redemption draws near mm. look at the fig tree and all the trees when mm. they are ready budding you see you know for yourselves that summer is now near so you also when you see these things happening know that the kingdom of god is near assuredly i say to you this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place heaven and earth will pass away but my word will by no means pass away but take heed to yourselves lest your hearts be weighed down mm. with carousing drunkenness and cares of this life and that day come on you unexpectedly for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth mm. watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass mm. and stand before the son of man Amen. and in the day time he was teaching in the temple but at night he went out and stayed stayed on the mountain called olivet mm. then early in the morning all the people came to him in the temple to hear him amen father him. I thank you so much for your word. I pray it will bring a transformation in us through us and all for your glory Lord in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you friends. Tomorrow we will see you, okay? We love you. Bye.